It's safe to say that no women's team in sports history has had as positive an impact as the U.S. women's soccer team, which has won our respect with gritty play and inspirational character over the last 25 years. Fresh off their gold medal in Athens, the national team is on a 10-city fan celebration tour, and we're fortunate to have three-star players that have stopped by for a visit. I welcome gold medalist Julie Foudy, Shannon Box, and Christy Pierce Rampone. How are you, ladies? Hi there. What, what an inspiration you were to so many people, uh, not only this year, but in 1996 in Atlanta, you won the gold medal. Uh, 2000, you won the silver. Call but that this white year, gold, Tim. White gold. <laughs> white gold. White gold. Oh, white gold. Platinum. Right, yeah. Platinum. Platinum. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you were just such a, an inspiration to so many, not only young women, but young men, too. Yeah. Thank you. That's, um, it's nice to hear. And it's been, I mean, it's been so fun. We've been playing together for a long time and um, have said for years, you know, that soccer is very popular in this country and maybe not one of the mainstream sports that everyone watches, but there's so many young kids out there that watch that it's nice that you know you feel like you're making a difference with the young girls and the boys too, and and that finally they have women role models they can look to, and um, you know, and and that aren't just great athletes but good human beings, you know, which is which is nice for them. What what is the fan celebration tour? Um, you know, right now it's just celebrating the fact that they watched us in Greece and to thank them for, for watching every single game and, and enjoying and helping us win that gold. I mean, definitely the fans helped us win, and it was just a great experience for me personally and I know for the team. And to come back here and celebrate it with the United States is, is a great achievement. You played Denmark uh, last night, of course, and, and they're good. Is there any country, one country, that's better than the other that – they're all, they're all, they um, there's definitely some teams that are better. I mean, like the Brazil, Germany, um, they always give us a run, Sweden. Um, but Denmark's definitely one of an up-and-coming team, and um, they gave us a run for our money last night. We uh, tied it at the end of the game, and it was a great game. Brazil was the team that you had to beat to win the gold medal in Athens. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they were good. Oh, yeah. They were real good. Yeah, they were real good. They were too good. I'm happy I'm retiring. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to play those guys no. again. You said five minutes more and you'd have been in trouble, right? Yeah, we, um, you know, they, we score first and, uh, you know, feeling good, and they come back, score, and we still got, what, 20 minutes left? 20 minutes left, yeah. In the final, you know, and we had our previous game in the semifinal, we had unfortunately gone into overtime, so we'd played an extra 30 minutes there. And you know, you're in your sixth game, and and you know, I like to consider myself young, Tim, but I'm, <laughs> I, let's let's be honest, I'm not that young for a soccer player. Um, so we're feeling it, and we get to those last 20 minutes, and they're hit, they hit the post twice or three times, and oh, yeah. really mm -hmm. playing very well. Like they're they're an excellent team, and they're very young. They got you know, 19 year old <laughs> that is one of the uh, best amazing. players I've ever seen, Marta. Marta. And uh, and so they were just kind of weaving through us. <laughs> and then we got to the overtime, and we just knew it. We said, yeah. you know, we, we've got this. We just had this great team chemistry in terms of just this belief, like, whatever happens, we are going to make it. We're going to win this thing and just keep mm -hmm. believing in each other. And that's what we did. And Abby Wambach, one of our young kids, was fortunate. I mean, we were fortunate enough that she has this great heading ability, and she knocked it in the back of the net for us. Well, what made them more skillful, the Brazilian team, was their speed, their agility, their strength? Or, or like all, of the above. Mm -hmm. all of the above. All yeah. the above. They played yeah. like guys. I mean, just the speed that they played at. And it was, you know, you hadn't seen that really. I mean, I feel like the United States has been on top. And now we're seeing that all these other countries are closing the gap. And they were a great team. Well, they're closing the gap quickly, I would yes, imagine. Yes, quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, there were different venues in Athens, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. I thought you, you played in one stadium, but you, mm -hmm. you moved around. Right. You even played on the island of Crete. Yes, we played on the island of Crete. It was um, where we opened up, and then we went to Thessaloniki. We go Thessaloniki back to Crete, and then we ended up in Athens mm -hmm. for our final game. Yeah. So mm -hmm. a week we before, traveled. Uh, work, week before our first game, we're like floating in the Mediterranean on rafts. You know, <laughs> like, like I can do this Olympics. <laughs> You know, this is the way it should be. Exactly. <laughs> Some so training good. regimen. Yeah, we yeah. were like, oh. let's take a picture and sit at home and say, working hard, preparing for the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I, I, I would imagine that your fan mail includes uh, a lot of school-age uh, young ladies who, who have aspirations of doing what, what you have done. I think that's pretty yeah. 
fair to say. You know, the eight to 16, 18 year old is, you know, all these young girls that want to grow up and, and win gold medals. And now they have, you know, Shannon and Christy and, and a lot of younger players like them that they can watch and, and emulate. You know, it's realistic. It's not an eight foot tall basketball player that's doing things they can't do, you know, which is what I grew up watching. So it's great to see that they have all these wonderful role models. Was that the case when you were young, Christy? Because you went to a very small college, mm -hmm. to Monmouth, Monmouth College. Yeah, I went college. to Monmouth. It was the same way. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any female role models to really look up to. So it was just watching the guys, trying to emulate the guys, be like the guys. And you know, went to a small school, played two sports. I just got very fortunate and lucky that I was at the right place at the right time, working hard, and got asked to the national team. It has been said that you were the best uh, athlete in Ocean County. <laughs> History. Yeah, I played that. Yeah. Right. Oh, she's a stud. She's yeah. a stud. Yeah, we played three sports in high school, so. She just has yeah. natural ability. I mean, we'll play a different sport, you know, for a practice one time. We'll start playing basketball. I remember we did something like that, and she was just all over, and we are like, where does this girl come from? You know? <laughs> so it's just, it's great. She's, she's very athletic. You went to Notre Dame. Yes. And, and excel there as both a student, and you yes. played soccer there? Played soccer, yeah. When did you start playing soccer? Um, I started when I was four. So I've been playing a long time. I've played every sport imaginable as well and grew up a tomboy. My role models were all guys. Uh, yeah, I have an older sister who was, you know, my probably the best role model I had, which was great because I was fortunate to have a girl as my role model. Um, but it was hard to see and, and now it's great to actually be a role model for young girls. An interesting when, fact is her sister won a gold medal in softball for the that's U.S. That's right, 96 uh -huh. in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So you had, had really two gold medals, medals in your gold family medals, yes. in two different mm -hmm. sports. That's, Mom did a good job. That's, a, that's, <laughs> that's pretty good genes yeah. right there. That's a good yeah, genes. All that mother right there. So, yeah. That's it. And you grew up in? Torrance, California. Uh-huh. Yeah. Torrance. That's, how'd you get to Notre Dame? I mean, you know, I just wanted to experience life. Um, you know, most of the places I looked at were in California, and I'd mm -hmm. never seen snow before. And so I said, hey, let's go the furthest away and see if I can live on my own and enjoy the snow. Oh, that's wonderful. It's fascinating. Three members of the women's soccer team and we'll be back with these ladies right after this. I'm talking with three members of the gold medal winning women's soccer team, Shannon Box, Christy Pierce Rampone of the New Guard, and Julie Foudy, who is retiring as the third most capped player in history. Mia Hamm, and who is the other? Christine Lilly. And Christine Lilly. Mm -hmm. What does the most capped player in history mean? Um, in soccer, for some reason, they call it a cap. I think th there is a reason to it. They used to give actually a baseball cap of all things oh, to, um, I don't know how that tradition started, to, you know, to, for every international game you play. So if you played an international game, you got, well, you know, a cap. And so hmm. instead of calling it an international appearance, that's how they count your games. They call them caps. Hmm. So I have over, I don't know, whatever, 200 and something international caps. A that's that, a lot. That's a lot. A lot. Which means that was good. You've been playing soccer for, since you were um, I a started child. on the national team when I was 16, so mm -hmm. I've been playing for 17 years on the national team. Wow. Yeah. And and you are, uh, did you think about continuing to, continuing to play or what, um, did, why did you decide to retire? I just, you know, I thought in 96 I was going to retire and then I thought in 99 <laughs> I was going to retire and I kept saying, oh, I need to get a real job, you know, <laughs> and then I just kept having fun and enjoying it and I love this team, you know, and I love being around these guys and playing soccer for a living. And we can finally do that in this country, you know, make a good living at it. And I've had some very good sponsors. So, um, but I knew this year, you know, I said, I, I want to go out on a high note, but I just know it's time. You know, I'm not crying wolf anymore. This is it. I got other things I want to do. And so, and it's been 17 years. It's time to let these guys <laughs> take over. Why, why do you think that soccer is so popular with the younger players, both little boys and girls? And then all of a sudden that professional soccer can't make it in this country. Why is that? You know, I don't, I've, I don't know. I just think for youth, it, it's, it's very easy to get into. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's AYSO, there's club soccer. I think there's just so much availability for it. And um, it's a great sport. You know, kids love to go out and play. Um, it's active. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think at the professional level, it's a newer sport. There's so many other professional teams and sports in the United States that it makes it difficult for soccer. It's newer 
in the United States. And, and uh, it seems like the, the interest wanes as, as boys and girls get older in this country. You've had uh, the, the Women's Soccer League a couple right. of years ago. Right. When under, is there any chance of that yeah. coming back? And there, yeah. there definitely is a chance. I'm, I'm not, you know, 2005 is going to be tough, but 2006, I think there's there's a, a, a big chance. I think part of the problem is we don't have an infrastructure in terms of stadiums for soccer. You know, you try and play in these 80,000 seat stadiums, and you may be drawing 20,000, which is a good soccer crowd. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, there's no environment, there's no atmosphere. It just feels like you're in an empty stadium. So they're now building. You know, the MLS and U.S. soccer are building a lot of soccer-specific stadiums, which is great because you create this really intimate, intense atmosphere, and the fans want to come back. Mm -hmm. What kind of crowds were you playing in front of in Athens? In Athens, the crowds are a little smaller. Um, what was it like three, four in the preliminaries, and it got up to, what, five for the finals? Ten, I think, for the finals. finals. Yeah, it was really small. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Five or 10,000? Yeah, yeah. Ten it was finals. like, it seemed like everyone kind of left, but um, we had a really good crowd for the finals. We, it was just, we had a lot of American fans, and there was a lot of Brazilian fans, so it was pretty intense um, when it came down to the finals. But once you're on the field, though, you forget about how many people are there anyway. Yeah. Did you stay at the Olympic Village? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah at the end, yeah. But it, it was kind of old hat to you, but your first time at the... Yeah. Well, it was my second time, yeah, second, oh, but second it was, time, yeah, we went to Olympic Village in the beginning, right when we got there, and then uh -huh. we ended up um, spending some time there after um, we won. So it was, it was nice to be around all the different athletes and, you know, eat in the same facility and uh, just be around them and feel how powerful it is and what everyone's doing. Yeah, was, take us through that. I mean, uh, the people that are watching this show have no idea. I know it became old hat to you, but uh, we no, really have no idea. Yeah. It never becomes old hat. It's amazing. It's 10,000 athletes, you know, mm. and everyone's got all their garb on and their gear and all, and you're all eating in the same area. It's chaos, but it's, yeah. it's like <laughs> control chaos. <laughs> and it's like this, your own little village, you know, there's a salon, you can get your hair cut, you know, which hair we got post office. <laughs> <laughs> you can get, you know, there's post office, you know, there's everything and you're, it's all contained in this village. And, and it's so fun because you're, you know, at the end when we were there, you're swapping all your gear for, yeah. you know, I've got all this great Russian gear, and it, it, it's just, and it makes, it's what makes the Olympics so special. All these different countries coming together, and mm. there for the same, you know, goal, and and you forget about the world's problems for a few weeks. And the goal is gold. Yeah, for and us. And we'll be back yeah. with uh, three of the terrific players for the women's soccer team right after this. The U.S. women's national team is currently on a celebration tour. You can talk. And, <laughs> and I'm sure one of the hopes is that oh it God. will lead to a return of a women's yeah. professional soccer league. We've talked about that briefly. Do you have, do you have a sponsor for the team for and the team individually? Mm -hmm. For the team we do. And, and I think we do have, you know, we have some for individuals. It's different, though. I mean, um, Oh, I know, team How so? ones. Yeah, we have we have different ones for each person. It's it's not the same sponsor. Like through. In, we, individually, you'll be able to tell by like our cleats, because oh. we're sponsored by Nike through U.S. Soccer. For so apparel. our apparel mm -hmm. will be Nike, and then individually we can wear our own shoes. So it's basically socks up is Nike. So you have shoe contracts, so, like yeah, basketball players mm -hmm. or uh, baseball players, football players. Mm -hmm. I assume. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, we're all different. We yeah. fight. Yeah, we fight because we're all, <laughs> oh, yeah. three of, all three of us are different. I'm Reebok, Chris I'm Adidas, is Adidas, and I'm Nike. Will, will they continue to last when you retire? I mean, um, well, that's a great question, Tim. <laughs> I'm currently in negotiations. <laughs> John. Well, that's well, a no. Talk about it. Yeah. I mean, no, what, I, what I've you been can with tell them us. for over a decade, and and so um, you know, I, and I do camps and. Um, I told them I can be a spokesperson in other areas, so I'm, I'm sure I'll continue to work with them. They've been fantastic. They were my very first sponsor that came on after college when, at the time, there wasn't a lot of money in women's soccer, and so they basically allowed me to, to, to train and live uh, as a soccer player because you, of them. You went to Stanford, I right? I did, yes. And, and, uh, and Notre Dame, Monmouth, and, and Stanford, you had a chance to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. Right, you were you were actually accepted in the med school. I, I yeah, I got accepted. That's I don't a, know that's why. It's a very hard <laughs> school to get into. I Stanford Medical School. I think my mom must have gotten in their ear a little bit or something, said nice things. The, um, do you regret not going? No, 
No, I, I don't. I, I mean, I knew when I um, when I made the decision, it wasn't it wasn't like oh, I want to continue playing soccer. It was more I I can't see myself in medicine. The, you know, the sad thing is I I spent two years talking to about every doctor I met. I like badgered people, and the the deciding factor was our team doctor said, Julie, I live on the 14th hole and I haven't played golf in five years. I went forget it. I'm not going to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I told you, no one would trust me as a doctor. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's that's uh, uh, getting back to Monmouth. Uh, you know, from Stanford mm -hmm. to my sandwich yeah, between like these two the universities, mm -hmm. the, uh, you, uh, there are very few opportunities for a young lady to to continue playing soccer in, mm -hmm. at a small college, right? Yeah, I was just very lucky and fortunate. You know, when I went to Monmouth, I actually went on a basketball scholarship and played soccer as well, and just continued to play, and I had a good good time and Tony DiCicco was the coach at the time for the national team and he saw me at a game because one of his friends was coaching and uh, he liked what he saw and he asked me in and it's it's been great because I've gotten a lot of support from everyone you know coming from a small school not knowing anyone um, going up through the ranks of playing ODP or state through through New Jersey so it was definitely a different route but uh, I was able to to make it through. What is, I mean why did, why did you start playing uh, soccer to begin with? Like I said I played a ton of different sports and I think that mm -hmm. I just ended up being a little bit better at soccer than the other mm -hmm. ones. And, you know, I wanted a scholarship. I wanted to play in college, and I just kind of went that road. I mean, I, I kind of took a little bit different path than everybody. I mean, I just made the national team over a little over a year ago. Mm -hmm. So I actually was, you know, away from soccer for a little bit after college. And then, thank, thank goodness, the WSA was there because that actually developed me. Was the was the uh, competition at Athens your first competition that you? No, made? I actually I mean, made for internationally. No, I made the the World Cup team. So uh -huh. I played in the World Cup right before it, but I was only invited into the team two days or a week before the World Cup started. Yeah. So. Shannon's amazing story because a little bit she didn't have an international appearance before going to the World Cup, right? Mm -hmm. Or like just two weeks before the World Cup, and then she mm -hmm. ends up starting and being, you know, one of our stars of the World Cup because of the league. Mm -hmm. um, so she's, it's a great story. A bit oh, different, so. Yeah. How long is the soccer season? It's pretty much year-round. Oh, yeah. Round. yeah. Is it? Yeah. Well, with oh. the league, it was, you know, six months, but with with the national team, it, it you know, it's we pretty much go year-round. Like, we were living together in, in Los Angeles leading up to the Olympics for six months in residency. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we're going to be back with the three of the stars of the women's soccer team. They won the gold medal in Athens. We'll be back with them right after this. I'm back with the ladies from the uh, women's soccer team that won the gold medal in Athens. Uh, Julie Foudy, Christy Pierce, and... Uh, Shannon Box, and you were talking. We were talking about family and how the how the ladies juggle family. Uh, Shannon, you're not married, nope. but you are Christy, and mm -hmm. you are Julie. How do, how in the world do you juggle family and husbands? Not that husbands are to be juggled, but sometimes they are. Well, how do you do that, though? It's tough, you know. Um, Especially when we're in a residency period where, our, you know, I live in Jersey and we're in residency in California. I'm away for six months. I come home, you know, every once a month, you know, for maybe four or five days. So it's, it's tough because you start to lead separate lives. But, you know, you have to really work on it. You know, I'm very lucky. Chris is a very special person that kind of allows me to do what I do. And he's very supportive and he can travel, you know, here mm -hmm. and there. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, I'm lucky to have someone that's special that, you know, is, is there for me on the ups and downs throughout the you know, the season, and, uh, you know, it's tough, but you have to have a lot of communication, and, you know, you have to work through a lot of things. Do your husbands travel with you occasionally? Yeah, occasionally. Mm -hmm. occasionally. Like, Chris was out in mm -hmm. L.A. for a while. Mm -hmm. My husband comes, you know, but, you know, then they, they're they like, we don't want to feel like we're, like, groupies <laughs> traveling with you everywhere, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, why not? <laughs> so, um, but it takes, it's true, you know, it's like, I'm the same, you know, Ian's the same way, very supportive and has been wonderful and never... You know, why aren't you home cooking and cleaning, you know? <laughs> it's like, this is great. You only have an opportunity to do this for a finite period of time, you know? Mm -hmm. Get as much as you can out of it, and I'll support it. And so, um, but it's not it's not easy, you know? Mm -hmm. You you know, we joke about taking the name tags, tags off after a week, you know, because mm -hmm. you have to reacquaint all the time. 
An another uh, member of the Fab uh, Five mm -hmm. is Joy Fawcett, mm -hmm. and she has three children. Three children, three yeah, children. and has raised them literally traveling with the team. Like those kids have, we consider ourselves like surrogate moms, you know, yeah. uh -huh. like 20 moms. And they're all boys. Right? No, all girls. Uh, all girls. girls. Yeah, oh. all girls. <laughs> yeah, and wow. and they're cute as can be, yeah. and she's yeah. just never complains. She'll have not slept an entire night, and you would never know it. She's just like super mom stud. Incredible. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the ages of the children? About right. ten, six, and three. three. Um, are they yeah. soccer players? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. The oldest two now, which yeah, is really funny because they're starting to understand, like, you know, mom, what she does, and how, mm -hmm. you know, how impressive she is, and all the all of Katie's friends, which who's the mm -hmm. oldest one, want you know, the mom's autograph, and it's neat. <laughs> Oh, what an advantage, too. I can imagine it's almost like Ken Griffey Jr. growing up in, you know, right. in his father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you one final question, and I want your final answer. <laughs> now, it's your it, final answer. What would be your suggestion if a young lady who aspired to be a, a soccer player, what would be your answer to, to her? You know, my, my biggest thing that I tell young girls especially is just to have a good time, have fun, love the game because the minute you stop loving it then you need to be done and that's what I've done my whole life you know I've just loved to play the game and that's the most important part of it mm -hmm. and certainly not financial reward right <laughs> you know, because the, the amount of financial reward is, is is not anywhere close to what you get out of it personally right you know I mean you play because you love the sport and if you didn't you wouldn't be as successful on the field so you have to really enjoy it have fun you know even if, it, if they're the young play as many sports as you can enjoy life and then as you get older you know now you now your avenues down to which sport you want to play and finally uh, Julie it's uh, it's been a heck of a ride hasn't it? yeah it's been fun <laughs> and that's it you know we've loved playing mm -hmm. and you know there's laughter that's what we always talk about there's laughter on our team all the time and that's what it's about so Find what you love, you know, because that's where you're going to be successful. What are you going to be doing 20 years from now, do you think? Sitting on a desert <laughs> island with a big drink next to me, too. <laughs> Flags, like in my little drinks everywhere. It'll be like the United Nations. Yeah. No, She's I don't know. Our groupie. Yeah, 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 I'm going to be a us. hooligan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Painted face. I don't know. It'll be fun. It's a good time. Well, you've united this nation as far as women's soccer is concerned. I want to thank you very much for being my guest. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks for very much. Thanks for watching. See you next time.